Welcome, one, welcome all, to the Highlander Invitational Advanced Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp Tournament Round 1, where myself, semi original guy, am going up against Jimmy Kudo. Let's get into this one. Alright, folks, this match was played just a couple days ago against Jimmy Kudo. As we can see here, I opened up with my standard infantry builds. Absolutely nothing out of the ordinary there. Now, Jimmy Kuda does actually play player number two, so he does get an extra infantry there. I went ahead and just made a few extra infantry on the second turn just to secure a few extra caps. Uh, and it looks like both of us have actually put the landers uh, in range to propel some infantry to the middle so far. So that's pretty good. You know, good standard plays. Fantastic stuff. Now, if you want to watch the raw, uncut footage of this map, I will put a link in the description below to an unlisted video for that. But for the sake of the tournament, I'm just going to be doing a voice dub for it. Just so we don't have to spend a lot of time here. Alright, so Jimmy finished off his caps here, going for an additional cap. And it looks like he's going to be loading up those infantry into the lander. So, very good. I had the exact same idea. When it came to this lander, it just kind of made sense to pop two infantry in the mid and go for those labs pretty much as soon as you could. Uh, but the only thing different right now is I do have an infantry kind of running forward right now on the right hand side. So the right hand side here would be my strong front. It's got two bases to the one base on the opposite side. So by pushing the strong front pretty good, I'm hoping to get an advantage early on and deny some caps that Jimmy might be able to go for. Now, if I can deny those caps on the right-hand side and actually focus on my caps on the left, that'll give me a property advantage early on. So if I'm able to hold on to that property advantage, it'll be fantastic for me, folks. Fantastic for me. Now, there's a lot of contested properties here, and it's very difficult to get some of them. Considering that reboot camp, the labs that you see situated in the middle of the map here, they only offer one star terrain. So any infantry attack in those would have a huge advantage and most likely be able to, well not most likely, but guaranteed to hit KO anything that is doing those caps. So it's incredibly dangerous terrain, but I open up a tank on my strong front and Jimmy actually answers also with a tank on his strong front. So very interesting so far. Now I do notice that I am in range to cap that lab, but I don't actually decide to go for it because he has a potential two strike on that lab right now if he decides to stop his cap. And that's just something that I don't really want to deal with, folks. Don't want to deal with that at all. So I decide to just position myself accordingly and hopefully stop his cap. Now Jimmy decides to send his tank into the mid, which is very interesting. So that tank is going to be able to either attack basically either sides at this point. Now, it could go mid, interrupt some caps there, or it can go over to the strong front and assist over there, or the weak front, I should say, for Jimmy, over to my strong front. Now, I still can't grab any of those labs, but I am putting my infantry forward to deny any potential caps. Now, at this point, I'm trying, or I was trying to decide what to do with my tank over on the left-hand side. So I kind of just planted in the forest, and I'm waiting for Jimmy to make a move. So if he decides to push forward, then I'm probably going to be attacking him. But he can easily build a tank out of his strong front right now to actually deny my tank's movement and add a lot of pressure. But he decides to pull his infantry back, which I thought was kind of interesting uh, for me, not necessarily for him. But what that's going to allow is it's giving me space to actually cap one of the labs right there. So I begin a cap. And it's uninterruptible at the moment. So if I manage to secure that lab, it's going to give me an income advantage and a property advantage. So when you have a property advantage or an income advantage in Advance Wars, it's going to be up to your opponent to actually make a move to do something about it, you know? Because you can actually just sit pretty for a little while while your opponent has to make a move. And I do decide to go up and attack an infantry on a mountain. Uh, the reason for that was mainly because he has two infantry uh, in position to start caps on labs. So I knew that one infantry would possibly be able to start a cap. 
So that one right there. The other one could potentially start a cap too. Uh, worst case scenario is I didn't want him to be able to secure two caps in one turn and force me to attack into that little bunch right there. Because attacking into three tanks, even if you have, you know, multiple tanks, it's pretty risky. It's pretty risky still. It's gonna it's gonna result in a brawl, and you don't really want to be brawling super early in a match. Unless you can get some sort of massive advantage right now. So I only have two tank strikes with my dudes. So it's not really worth it to go in and start brawling. But I wanted to just, like I said, deny the potential for a cap there until I had more reinforcements. So now I have four tanks in position. Which is great, because four tanks versus three tanks, well possibly four tanks, because he did actually end up building one more tank. And I think at this point he might have actually built a medium tank, so classy shout out to those guys right there. Now I decided to set my tanks up on the right hand side in a way that would allow if a medium tank strike, if he decided to go down and hit that open tank. So I think Jimmy kind of sniffed out the plot and ended up not attacking, but he did leave his infantry open. That's capping right now. So 7 plus 7 is 14, so that cap has 6 HP right now. So if I actually attack it with an infantry, then that'll make it so he can't finish the cap right away. But I am getting a little bit worried on the weak front because he's got a whole lot of infantry and two tanks right now that are just inching closer so I'm not feeling super super hot about that but on the strong front I decide to do the obvious you know I go up and I take a shot on that infantry and I take a shot on the infantry over on a lab on my weak front and move my tank over just a little bit so that it's out of range of his tanks and still in the position where I can back up my infantry if needed. Now the rest of my infantry are set up in a way that I would be able to deny caps if he managed to go for them. So this turn I believe I just go triple tank. Yeah, so I go triple tank this turn so I'm just really really pushing that tank aggression. Now Jimmy does a really interesting move. Um, he actually puts his medium tank in range of my medium tank over on the right hand side. Which is a pretty, it's a pretty ballsy move folks, I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Uh, allowing your medium tank to get first struck by another medium tank, especially max medium tank. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. It's, uh, it's a power play. That's what it is. Definitely a power play. Um, he does leave a tank open for a strike on the left hand side and my controller keeps dying here so just bear with me all right <laughs> so now that that is done um, he did leave a tank open on the left hand side for a tank strike now he does have one tank that is covering right now but I have another tank that I just built which is in position to reinforce so I decide to bring that guy up and I take two infantry strikes and I go up and smack that guy in the face with my medium tank now he does have another medium tank build in order to back up his already currently existing medium tank. Uh, I consider going in with a bunch of my units and doing an attack, but I decide to just hold back a little bit, do two safe hits, and set up the rest of my tanks accordingly and build another medium tank, and actually a recon over on my weak front. Now I'm thinking with the looming threat of max force, a recon would actually be really good because I'll be able to push it up just enough that it'll be able to trade spots with my tank. And if he decides to go in and do some attacks, I'll be able to push that recon up, do some damage. But he does do max force here. Uh, pretty good max force um, for the sake of taking out one tank on the left hand side. But it doesn't look like he actually really follows through very much on the strong front here. He actually decides to shift a few of his guys over to the his own strong front. Uh, so now he's got a pretty large presence of tanks over there. Now it doesn't immediately do any threats, um, but it is making it so I'm not able to really push out the way that I would want to. So I am very much on the defensive over here. And he moves in with like a big line of infantry, and it's pretty intimidating folks, pretty intimidating. I did not really expect him to push that forward. Now I decided to attack his medium tank with my medium tank. Because uh, I was considering whether or not I would be able to get max force and I was thinking that I would be able to strike his medium tank with my fresh one with max force But then I realized I 
miscalculated the uh, the range on that. So that was not um, very good on my part. Definitely a miscalculation. So yeah, you live and learn, folks. You live and learn. But I decided to build another medium tank, so that is like three medium tanks for me right now. You know, if you, anybody, if you know, you're on my channel, folks. Medium tanks are classy. They are beautiful, and you got to get them on the field. But on the left-hand side, I managed to do a bunch of strikes on his infantry. So I basically denied any potential for him to come up and start any caps. So I thought that was fantastic. Now Jimmy decides to move in with a couple of his tanks doing a few big hits here. So very nice hits. Now however, those tanks are actually in range of my tanks over on the right-hand side by my HQ. So. I believe next turn I'm able to swing those guys in. But in the meantime, I mean, Jimmy's got that medium tank on his side right there, although that is now once again in position to be first struck by one of my guys, so I go ahead and take that shot. And I consider moving the other tanks up, but I'm like, you know what? It's like, it's not time yet. It's not time. We still got to play defensively. We still got to play smart. So we don't do that. We don't do that at all. But we build more medium tanks because, like I said, classy. Haha, <laughs> classy. That's what I'm talking about. All right, Max Force over here by Jimmy decides to push in with one of his tanks, taking a big shot. And the rest of his dudes here, let's see. Looks like he is able to do quite a bit of damage here with this Max Force. So he manages to take out an infantry. He will be able to secure the kill on the capping infantry. And he does a lot of damage to my medium tank here, bringing it down all the way to 2 HP, which I was very sad about. Uh, you don't want to have your medium tank 2 HP, and you want to have those guys as healthy as possible, ready for violence at any point. That's what you want them for. And also, they're beautiful, so you got to get them out. But I was very sad about that. But it did leave him a little bit vulnerable. Now, it doesn't really look like I have a whole lot of presence over there on the right-hand side, but I have enough that I'm able to do quite a bit of damage. And I checked the stats here, and for some reason it says that I've lost like 18 units to his like six, which I thought was kind of odd, but I think he's joined a bunch of units this game, so it kind of makes sense. And like, I have a lot of units of his very injured, but they're not dead, unfortunately. Uh, they're not finished off units, so he does pull a bunch of those guys back. So he's got the numbers. Now I think what Jimmy probably should have did was instead of pulling all these infantry back, he should have just um, shoved them all to the front line here, right, and used a lot of them as blockers, forcing me to attack them and keeping his other units safe. But he does take out another one of my tanks, which I was, you know, once again pretty sad about over on the left-hand side. And I don't really have a whole lot of stuff to attack him with. I only have one injured tank, two injured tanks, and a fresh tank that I can't quite reach. But he does put two infantry, oh, technically three infantry right now in range of capping a lab. So, yeah, little iffy about that, and he's getting pretty close to power again. Um, so I don't decide to actually attack his medium tank, his 3 HP medium tank. I decide to keep that guy alive because I'm just, I don't really want him to get power right away. Take a strike on his tank with my 8 HP tank and actually join it up. So it's now a fresh full tank ready to go. Drop off a recon in the center with my lander. So that guy's going to be able to do some infantry harassment. And Jimmy's now trying to decide what he wants to do. He decides to sacrifice his medium tank to attack my medium tank, doing two damage. He does have a Neo tank right now. And Neo tanks are pretty stinky. And we don't really like them on this channel too much. However, they do always, um, you know, they have a purpose for sure. They have a purpose. But not my, not my favorite thing. <laughs> Definitely stinky. All right, so he does build an APC. Uh, he's looking to funnel those infantry forward as quickly as he can. Uh, but with the use of my max force right here, I managed to take out some tanks on the left-hand side and actually do massive damage to the Neo tank with my two medium tanks, taking that guy all the way down to 2 HP. Uh, Jimmy decides to follow up with one of his tanks. Uh, my medium tanks are now fairly injured. They're not doing too hot. And he is pushing in with a few other units. But I think at this point, I have enough units on the field that I'm basically able to get map control. So at this point, it's really just a just a slow push here until the very end. And he actually does build a missile 
which is just signifying the beginning of the end. So he's basically accepted at this point that he's not going to be able to cap any properties. And I build three max artillery just to finish it off here too. And that was the end of the game. All right, so I just want to say congratulations to Jimmy. I thought he was a fantastic opponent. It was a lot of fun playing him. And I'm glad I finally had the opportunity to do so. I also want to thank Highlander for putting on the tournament and for the Advance Wars Reboot Camp love. I do very much enjoy Advance Wars, Advance Wars content, and just anything Advance Wars. You know, I just love it. So I'm very happy to have had the opportunity to play in a tournament such as this. I'm going to leave Highlander's YouTube channel link in the description here. And as well as a link to Advance Wars by Web, if you guys want to play Advance Wars with people from around the world, you can check out that website there. And in the meantime, you know, we're just going to be waiting for our next round opponent. Until then, take care, folks, and bye-bye for now.